Hello viewers, uh, in, in the last session we have seen that uh, our series are analytic <coughs> okay, and also uh, that uh, their differentiation is obtained by uh, differentiating the uh, terms of the power series and then summing up. Okay. So, uh, if f of z, so recall that if f of z is equal to sigma c n z power n power series of type 1 n equals uh, 0 through infinity. Okay. Uh, then uh, for, for mod z strictly less than r, here we will assume r is strictly positive. Okay. Then we saw that then f is analytic on b uh, 0 r and f prime of z has the uh, form n equals 0 through infinity okay. uh, n c n. So, n equals 1 through infinity I apologize equals 1 through infinity n c n z power n minus 1 for uh, r for mod z less than r. Okay. So, uh, the differentiation of the power series is differentiating it term by term and then summing up within the radius of convergence. Okay. So, that we have seen last time. Okay. So, uh, as an example, okay, as an example we will see the following. Uh, if we consider the power series f of z equals uh, z power n by n factorial sigma n equals 0 to infinity. Then, we will show that this is the uh, power series expansion for uh, the exponential function e raise to z. Okay. So, uh, firstly uh, there is one note. Okay. So, within this example itself I will make that note. There is a little ambiguity uh, here. So, when we write f of z. So, when we write f of z equals sigma n equals 0 to infinity c n z power n for type 1 uh, series. Then what we really mean is that uh, this is f of z. Okay. So, for type 1 series this is a split function f of z is equal to c 0 when z equals 0 and uh, f of z is uh, that series when z is not equal to 0. Okay. Since, 0 power 0 is not defined, we split the definition of f of z. Okay. Uh, note for type 2 series that f of z uh, is defined to be c 0 when uh, z equals a for type 2 series and uh, f of z is sigma c n z minus a power n uh, when uh, z is not equal to a. Okay. One needs to make the distinction because uh, at z equals 0 uh, and n equals 0, you have the ambiguity of uh, 0 raise to 0 and 0 raise to 0 is not defined. Okay. 0 power 0 is not defined. So, uh, there is that split form and then, uh, so having made that note, uh, let us look at this series. This series uh, has the property that uh, firstly, the radius of convergence of f is okay, by, by uh, simple uh, ratio test calculation. Okay, by ratio test, the radius of convergence of f is infinity okay, or you can use the cauchy hadamard formula either way. Uh, one can get this. Okay. So, so, so we can differentiate this power series. Okay. So, f prime of z for the same radius of convergence will look like n equals 1 through infinity of the differentiation of z power n is n z power n minus 1 divided by n factorial. Okay. So, I will cancel the n in the numerator and the denominator. So, uh, I will cancel the n in the n factorial to get n equals 1 through infinity z power n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 factorial. And by readjusting the index once again, this is nothing but n equals 0 through infinity z power n by n factorial, which is your f of z to begin with. Okay. 
So, we have um, shown that f prime of z is nothing but f of z for mod z okay, uh, or for any z belongs to r or not r I apologize to c. Okay, uh, because the radius of convergence is infinite. Okay, not only that, observe that f of zero is uh, zero, so, or rather one. f of zero should actually equal one, because uh, c zero. Okay, since c zero for this series, since uh, uh, c zero for this series is. Uh, 0 is, is 1 rather 1 by 0 factorial okay which is 0 factorial is defined to be 1 so you have 1 okay f of z f prime of z is equal to f of z okay so um, so f so the given power series is a solution to the uh, initial value problem uh, f prime of z equals f of z and f of 0 is equal to 1. Okay. So, since we know that uh, okay, or by the existence and uniqueness of solutions to differential equations. Okay, uh, we know that the solution to this IVP has to be uh, unique. Okay, so uh, so we know that e power z is also a solution. We define the solution to this uh, e IVP as e power z. Okay, so um, the e power z has to equal um, this power series sigma z power n by n factorial n equals zero to infinity at z equals 0 we define this to be 1. Okay. So, e power z is this power series has this power series expansion around uh, z equals 0. Okay. For this is for any z belongs to c for z belongs to c uh, z not equal to 0. Okay. So, I will split this this is equal to 1 if z is equal to 0. So, that is the power series expansion of e power z and it is valid all throughout the complex plane. All right. So, we see that uh, e power z has a power series expansion uh, for any complex number okay, modulo this small uh, uh, small change at z equals 0. Okay. So, uh, now a question can be uh, as follows. Uh, is every analytic function a power series or so to say is can every uh, analytic function uh, be expressed as a power series. Well, we already know that the answer uh, cannot be yes or we know that the answer is uh, no, because 1 by 1 minus z is analytic on. Okay. So, let me write the question, question is every analytic function a power series on its domain of analyticity that is the question. Okay. So, we know that 1 by 1 minus z is analytic on all of c except at one point namely 1. So, on c minus 1 on the set c minus 1, 1 by 1 minus z is analytic, but, uh, but 1 by 1 minus z is equal to uh, one kind of power series, uh, which is the geometric series z power n n equals 0 through infinity for only for uh, mod z less than Okay. Beyond mod z less than 1, we know that uh, we know at least that this power series is not uh, correct for 1 by 1 minus z. Okay. So, 1 by 1 minus z does not equal this power series for mod z less than 1, of uh, mod z greater than 1, sorry. Okay. So, um, so, the point is uh, not all analytic functions 
are equal to a unique power series on the whole domain of analytics of their analyticity. Okay. So, uh, so that happens. So, then uh, one can ask the following modified question is every analytic function uh, equal to some power series. Okay. Uh, if not if not on all of the domain of analyticity uh, at least in a small neighborhood around a point of analyticity. Okay. So, is every analytic function equal to some power series locally i e in in some b a r for r positive Okay, where uh, where A is a point of analyticity for F for the given function. Okay, that is what locally means. Locally means that there is a small disk around the point of analyticity. Okay. Uh, of radius of positive radius such that uh, you know a certain property holds that is a local property and the property we are interested in here is whether every analytic function is locally an analytic uh, an, a, a power series rather. Okay. So, the answer to this question turns out to be yes and, um, and uh, this is answered by uh, the Taylor's theorem. The Taylor's theorem tells us that uh, every analytic function is locally a power series. Okay. So, uh, let us see what the Taylor's theorem says. Okay. So, here is the statement of Taylor's theorem. Okay. So, let, let f be an analytic function on B A R. Okay. So, since we are interested in uh, expressing the analytic function as power series locally, okay, although f could be uh, analytic on a bigger set, we will only assume for the time being that it is analytic on, on the disk itself okay, B A R. Then uh, there exists or there exist unique constants C n such that C n I should say uh, n belongs to integers n greater than or equal to 0. Okay, n belongs to integers and n greater than or equal to 0. Okay. There exists unique constants uh, C n such that f of z is equal to sigma n equals 0 through infinity C n z minus a power n z belongs to B a r for any z belongs to B a r okay. f of z equals that power series on that disk. Okay. The constant C n furthermore, okay. so the constants C n uh, are given by C n is equal to the nth derivative of the function f at a divided by n factorial which is actually equal to 1 by 2 pi i uh, the integration over C r. Okay. I will explain what C r is. It is a circle of radius little r okay, um, around a of f of w by w minus a raised to n plus 1 d w, where C r is circle of uh, 
radius r okay radius r strictly less than capital r okay so i'll say zero strictly less than little r less than capital r okay uh, oriented okay centered at a and oriented in the counterclockwise direction okay in the counterclockwise direction that is the positive direction recall so uh, firstly note that uh, by um, by uh, what we have noted earlier okay by the theorems earlier we know that every analytic function is uh, differentiable any number of times. So, the nth derivative of an analytic function f exists okay, in its domain of analyticity. So, uh, this expression here f n the nth derivative of f at the point a is valid okay, uh, makes sense. Okay. And by Cauchy's integral formula for the nth derivatives we know that uh, we know that uh, the nth derivative of f at a divided by n factorial is precisely the expression on the uh, on the right hand side. So, that is the statement of uh, the Taylor's theorem. Okay. So, it not only tells us that the uh, that an analytic function is locally expressible as power series, but also that uh, the the constants c n in the power series are given by the nth derivative of f at a divided by n factorial. So, in order to prove this theorem, we will prove this theorem, but in order to prove this we first need a couple of uh, lemmas. Okay. So, um, here is um, the first lemma. Okay, lemma. So, uh, I am following the development here uh, in uh, from one of the textbooks um, introduction to complex analysis by Priestley. Okay. So, uh, lemma 1 uh, I since I did not define uh, what uh, uniform convergence is I will have to uh, I will have to I will need a result which will tell me when I can exchange integration and uh, summation. Okay. So, here is uh, lemma 1 let gamma be a path and let u u naught u 1 etcetera. Okay. Uh, so, any u n for that matter n belongs to uh, uh, non negative integers. Okay. So, um, u b uh, b continuous on the trace of gamma in the complex plane okay, and assume that sigma k equals 0 through infinity of u k of z okay, converges to u of z which is point wise convergence okay, for all z belongs to gamma star the trace of gamma in the complex plane. Now, assume that there exist constants m k ok k belongs to non negative integers ok k belongs to z k greater than or equal to 0 ok uh, such that sigma m k ok uh, k equals 0 through infinity converges and this m k s are related to u k s as follows u k of z okay, in modulus is less than or equal to m k uh, for all z belongs to the trace of gamma. Okay. So, for any z belongs to the trace of uh, gamma the modulus of u k of z is less than or equal to m k. Okay. Then, ok. 
okay, then uh, sigma then the conclusion is sigma k equals 0 through infinity of the integration contour integration of u k of z over the contour gamma okay, is equal to uh, the integration over the contour gamma of the summation of u k of z d z k equals 0 through infinity. So, we can exchange the integration and the summation. Okay. So, uh, this is equal to uh, the integral over gamma of uh, u of z d z by definition of the summation. Okay. Since, the summation converges to u of z, I am just replacing the summation by capital U of z. Okay. So, we know that uh, from our experience with functions of real numbers and series of, uh, of uh, real functions, we know that uh, it is not necessary that we can always exchange the integration and uh, summation. Okay. So, uh, under these circumstances, this lemma gives us a sufficient condition uh, under which we can exchange the uh, integration and summation. Okay. Recall that uh, the summation involves a, a limiting process okay. and if it were a finite process, if you are taking finite sums, you can always ex exchange the integration and summation because integration is a, uh, is a linear operator. Okay. So, uh, but when you have uh, infinite sums, you have to be more careful, there is a limiting process and it does not uh, commute very well always with uh, integration process. Okay. So, uh, so this lemma tells us that if if you have a convergent series of functions, okay, a term by term convergent series of uh, uh, or point by point convergent series of functions. So, uh, for each point z, this series of functions converges to u of z, okay, and uh, at least for all z belongs to gamma star, okay, and if these u k of z in modulus are less than or equal to some uh, fixed constants m k okay, uh, and uh, sigma m k converges, then you can exchange the integration and summation for this u k of z okay, over the contour gamma. Okay, that is the con content of this lemma. Okay. So, here is the proof. So, first we will uh, take finite sums of this u k of z. So, for n equals 0, 1 etcetera for any uh, non negative um, capital N let u n of z capital U subscript n of z be the finite sum sigma k equals 0 through capital N of u k of z little u k of z. Okay. So, uh, both u n capital U n and capital U are continuous. Of course, uh, capital U n is continuous because it is a sum finite sum of continuous functions okay, and capital U is given to be continuous, it is continuous by hypothesis. Okay. So, capital U are continuous where um, and hence integrable on uh, gamma star. on the uh, set gamma star in the complex plane. So, uh, now also we know that sigma modulus of u k of z okay, converges by comparison test that is clear because sigma m k converges. So, the hypothesis of the uh, lemma says uh, sigma m k converges and term by term modulus of u k of z is less than or equal to m k. So, uh, definitely sigma u k converges uh, okay, for any z okay, uh, by comparison test for any z belongs to gamma star. Okay. So, now what we will do is we will estimate uh, u of z using uh, the u capital N of z. Okay. So, what we will do is we will take the difference of u of z okay, uh, with u k of z, but uh, what we will do is we will 
take the difference of the integrals of these okay so and estimate them so in the contour integration of u of z dz over gamma minus the sum from k equals 0 to capital n of the integration um, the contour integration of u k of z dz over gamma okay uh, in absolute value in in the modulus this is nothing but the uh, modulus of the contour integration of u of z minus u capital n of z uh, dz right one and the same you can exchange the uh, integration and summation here because you are uh, you have a finite sum here k equals 0 through n okay so this is less than or equal to okay this is less than or equal to by uh, one of the estimations we had on integration this is less than or equal to the supremum over z belongs to gamma star of the modulus of the integrand u of z minus u n of z okay, times the length of gamma, okay, the length of gamma star rather, okay, in complex plane, the length of the uh, contour uh, gamma. So, I will just say gamma. Okay. So, this is less than or equal to in turn this is less than or equal to uh, well the difference u of z minus u n of z okay is equal to uh, is equal to the uh, tail of the series sigma u k of uh, z okay so this is less than or equal to the supremum over z belongs to gamma star of uh, the modulus of uh, the tail okay and which in turn is by an infinite version of triangle inequality is less than or equal to k equals n plus 1 through infinity this is the tail of uh, the absolute value series of u k of z okay so i'm using an infinite version of the triangle inequality here okay so uh, then we we get that the earlier is less than or equal to so this is actually equal to notice that this thing within the within the uh, absolute value or the modulus is equal to this tail k equals n plus 1 through infinity sigma k equals n plus 1 through infinity of u k of z okay and then um, and then uh, you shift the absolute value inside like this okay by triangle inequality okay and then you get this times the length of gamma okay so then uh, this is in turn less than or equal to the supremum well each of these uk of z in modulus we know is less than or equal to mk by hypothesis so this is less than or equal to uh, sigma k equals n plus 1 through infinity of mk times the length of gamma okay and as as n goes to infinity since uh, m k sigma m k converges as n goes to infinity sigma k equals n plus 1 through infinity m k uh, tends to 0 okay, since uh, sigma m k converges. Right? If you have uh, k equals 0 through infinity converges. Okay. If you have a convergent series, okay, the tail of the series we know tends to 0. Okay. So, um, so, this, uh, so, this allows us to say that, so this estimate which we started off with as limit as n goes to infinity okay, uh, will be, will be uh, tending to 0. Okay, will be tending to 0. So, the integration of u of z, the contour integration of u of z dz okay, is equal to, uh, okay, so we have in modulus this is equal to 0. So, this is equal to uh, sigma k equals 0 through uh, infinity, okay, limit as 
capital N goes to infinity. Uh, so, we have infinity on the top of the summation as the top bound of summation uh, of the contour integral of u k of z d z. Okay. So, uh, this i e okay, uh, gamma sigma u k of z d z, because that is what capital U of z is k equals 0 through infinity. Uh, this is equal to sigma k equals 0 through infinity integral gamma integral over gamma of u k of z d z. Okay, or in, in short, we can exchange uh, the uh, summation and integration under these circumstances. Okay. So, it is the end of proof of this lemma uh, and um, we will use this for the proof of Taylor's theorem. Okay. So, this is the first result that we will need okay. and uh, the next result uh, that we will need to prove uh, Taylor's theorem is as follows. Uh, so, this is about uh, the coefficients of power series. Okay. So, let f of z equals sigma k equals 0 through infinity c k z power k, where uh, the power series, where this power series has radius of convergence. are strictly greater than 0. So, positive radius of convergence. Okay. Then we know that uh, capital uh, little f is uh, analytic. Okay. So, um, so it is differentiable term by term or uh, I mean its differentiation is the uh, differentiation of these terms okay, and then uh, summing it up. Okay. So, um, there is also uh, the fact that then the coefficients of this power series C n okay, are given by 1 by 2 pi i integration over C r f of z by z power n plus 1 d z, where 0 less than or equal to r strictly less than r n greater than or equal to 0. Okay, and um, and C r. Okay, so, I will write below and C r. C r. There is a clash of notation may be this is little c n and this is capital C r. Okay. So, and capital C r is uh, a circle of radius r is the contour okay, a circle of radius r centered at 0. Okay, and uh, oriented positively. So, this tells us that if you take a power series which has positive radius of convergence, okay, then its coefficients or uh, then its constants are unique and there is a specific formula for that constant. Okay, and the, the the constants are given by uh, c n equals 1 by 2 pi i the contour integration of f of z divided by z power n plus 1 over the contour c r, where r is c r is a circle of radius little r strictly less than the radius of convergence okay, and it is oriented positively. Okay. So, let us see the proof of this theorem of this uh, little lemma okay, and uh, it goes as follows. The integration of um, f of z by z power n plus 1, okay, the contour integration over c r of f of z divided by z power n plus 1 dz. Okay, this is equal to the integration over uh, c r of uh, clearly uh, sigma k equals 0 through infinity of c k of z power k divided by z power n plus 1 dz. Okay. And this in turn is the integration okay, uh, of 
CR, okay, sigma k equals 0 through infinity of C k. Uh, I will divide z power n plus 1 term by term. So, I will get z power k minus n minus 1 d z okay, and then all this uh, d z okay. and provided I can uh, interchange uh, the limit or uh, sorry the summation and the integration. Okay. So, uh, I get sigma k equals. So, let us for the time being assume that I can interchange them. I will show that I can interchange them by the earlier result. Okay. So, then this is equal to sigma k equals 0 through infinity of the integration contiguous integration over C r of uh, C k z power k minus n minus 1 d z. Okay. C k's are constants. So, this is equal to uh, 2 pi i. Okay. So, there is only one survivor for this integral as k runs from 0 through infinity. Okay. When k equals n, um, you have uh, this integration for a small n of r. This integration uh, is actually equal to 2 pi i times c n. Okay. So, this will give you 2 pi i times c n when um, because of the survivor uh, z power minus 1 when k equals n. The other functions z power k minus n minus 1 for k not equal to n give 0 upon integration uh, by the fundamental integral uh, that we calculated earlier. Since c r is a simple closed curve the integration upon c r uh, of these functions uh, give us 0. Okay. So, this is 2 pi i times c n and uh, I should just now justify uh, how I can exchange the uh, integration and summation. Okay. So, um, oh by the way this tells me that c n is actually equal to, so c n is equal to 1 by 2 pi i times the integration of um, f of z divided by z power n plus 1 over circle of radius r. So, uh, Firstly, notice that if I set let u k of z equals c k z power k minus n minus 1 okay, and capital U of z is z power minus n minus 1 f of z. Okay. So, then I know that uh, then u of z is equal to sigma k equals 0 through infinity uh, u k of z on at least uh, z belongs to c r star. It is actually true on all of the uh, for all z belongs to uh, the disk of convergence. Okay. So, um, but at least it is true on the um, trace of c r. Okay. Also, uh, the modulus of u k of z and all these functions are continuous. Okay. I mean this is clear uh, because that is what f of z is. Okay. So, this is clear and uh, these functions are continuous uh, u k of z is equal to m k. Okay. What is m k? This is uh, modulus of c k uh, r power k minus n minus 1 that is the constant we are looking at okay. and sigma m k uh, converges because uh, little r is strictly less than capital R which is the radius of convergence. Uh, so, this, this shows that the hypotheses of the previous lemma are satisfied. Okay. So, all the hypotheses are met um, you, you have u k converging to uh, sigma u k converging to u of z okay. and then u and u k s are all continuous. Uh, further, um, you also have that uh, this modulus of u k of z is less than or equal to m k actually it is equal to this m k and sigma m k converges. Okay. Uh, so, you can exchange the, the limit uh, sorry the, the summation and the integration and so, uh, so you have this formula for c n's the coefficients c n's in the power series. So, that completes the proof of this uh, second lemma okay. and now we are ready to uh, prove uh, the Taylor's theorem. Okay. So, we will start by uh, fixing 
let, let me uh, revisit the statement of the theorem. Okay. So, it says that a function f is is assumed to be analytic on B A R R positive. Okay. Then f is locally a power series and uh, and the constants C n are given by uh, moreover the constants C n are given by the nth derivative of f at a divided by n factorial. Okay. So, there are uh, several things to prove here. So, firstly uh, you fix a certain z belongs to B A R. Okay. What we have to show is that uh, uh, the power series uh, actually converges to f of z. Okay. So, uh, we have to show two functions are equal. So, for z belongs to B A R we have to show that the uh, values of the functions are equal. Okay. So, uh, fix that fix some z and choose uh, choose r little r such that such that the modulus of z minus a is less than little r is less than capital R. Okay. So, uh, we want a little r between uh, modulus of z minus a and capital R. Now, uh, by uh, Cauchy's integral formula we know that uh, f of z the function f of z. Okay. Remember, we are trying to reconcile the power series the value of the power series and the value of f of z. Okay. So, let me first uh, look at the value of f at z this is 1 by 2 pi i times the integration over c r the contour integration over the contour c r of f of w divided by w minus z uh, d z d w. Okay. So, that much I know from Cauchy's integral formula. Okay. Now, since modulus of z minus a is less than modulus of w minus a for all w belongs to uh, the circle of radius r centered at a. Okay. So, uh, since z minus a notice is strictly less than r. Okay. So, uh, the Okay, what you can do is uh, you can take 1 by w minus z which appears here in the integration. So, in the integration the integrand is f of w divided by w minus z I will concentrate on the denominator or namely I will concentrate on 1 divided by w minus z I will multiply f of w later. Okay. So, 1 divided by w minus z can be written as 1 by w minus a times uh, times 1 by this is a standard trick we will write this as 1 minus z minus a by w minus a. Okay. And since modulus of z minus a is less than modulus of w minus a we can expand this piece within the square parentheses we can expand that as geometric series. I okay. will uh, write that 1 by 1 minus z minus a by w minus a can be expanded as geometric series. Okay. So, uh, so 1 by w minus z this expression here is equal to 1 by w minus a times that geometric series which is uh, sigma. Okay. So, sigma uh, n equals 0 through infinity of z minus a by w minus a whole raised to n or z minus a power n uh, divided by w minus a power n. Okay. So, that much I can do. Okay. So, I have somehow uh, got a, uh, a power series within uh, the value for f of z. Okay. So, now I will uh, try to express f of z as power series itself. Okay. So, f of z from from that Cauchy's integral formula I will say from star this is star okay. from star where did I use star earlier okay. from uh, star or let me call it star star maybe I have used star okay. so star star from star star f of z is equal to 1 by 2 pi i 
times integration over the contour C r of f of w divided by w minus uh, z d w and I have written uh, w minus z in this fashion here. Okay. So, this is equal to 1 by 2 pi i integration over C r of f of w, I will keep the f of w aside okay, times 1 by w minus a times the sigma n equals 0 through infinity of z minus a raised to n divided by w minus a raised to n and then all this uh, d w. On the compact set C r, the trace of C r, okay, uh, the continuous function f of w, okay, f is bounded. It is actually analytic, so, so it is definitely continuous and it is bounded. Okay. So, there is an m okay, uh, such that uh, modulus of z minus a power n okay, uh, divided by uh, modulus or modulus of z minus a power n divided by w minus a power n plus 1 f of w is less than or equal to m divided by r. So, for this f of w I am using m and then um, w minus a in modulus is equal to r okay. and then I will have uh, I, I took 1 r for modulus of w minus a 1 modulus of w minus a and then I to take n r raised to n for the other the remaining n okay. and then I have modulus of z minus a raised to n. Okay. So, let me call this constant as, so since we have fixed z all the all of the right hand side here is a constant let me call that m n. Okay. Uh, the series sigma m n converges, because what we have uh, is a is a constant okay, is a uh, is a constant times a geometric uh, series when we when we sum up sigma m n okay we have a constant times a geometric series okay and that converges okay so um, uh, now um, by lemma 1 therefore okay uh, we have uh, we have sigma m n converges okay, and this thing is less than or equal to uh, m n uh, okay, for, for all n okay. and so in here I can exchange the integration and summation. Okay. So, by lemma 1 what I have is uh, by lemma 1 uh, f of z is actually equal to sigma n equals 0 through infinity 1 by 2 pi i times the integration over C r of f of w by w minus a raised to n plus 1 uh, d w okay, times z minus a raised to n. Okay. So, I will put this within parentheses uh, times z minus a power n and everything is in sigma, everything is in sigma. Okay. And this much from Cauchy's integral formula, we recognize that to be uh, the nth derivative of f at a divided by n factorial. Okay. So, by uh, this is equal to this by uh, Cauchy's integral formula for higher derivatives. Okay. So, we proved all our assertions and that uh, proves uh, Taylor's theorem. Okay. Uh, so, we will see, uh, we will see some examples in the next session. I will stop here.